What If Deku Was a Villain, Part 1. So this is going to be my new What If, guys, for this week. Um, and please give me suggestions for an, a n- new What If for next week. Um, but so, let's just get into this timeline. So, to start off, Deku, we're just going straight to the Cork Doctor. Now, the Cork Doctor's like, yeah, kid... It's not happening. You're not getting a cork. And, like, Deku's just dis- devastated by this. And he's just completely crushed. He he really wanted to be a hero. Now he can't. So, he goes back to school. Just gets bullied for another two years. Now, after these two years are up, something bad happens. So... There's been a, a serial killer on the loose just running. He's been running around just killing as many people as possible, and he came across Izuku's house. He broke into the house and thought he could take hostages because the heroes were right on his tail. So he goes into the house, pulls out a knife, and puts it right up to Inko's neck, which is Izuku's mom, by the way. I'm going to... From now on, I'm going to be calling him Deku. Um, but he puts a knife to Inko. And he's like, don't come any closer, I'll kill her. And they're just like, please, just put her down. And, like, Deku's horrified because, like, the heroes that he's always look up, looked up to were doing nothing to stop him. They were doing nothing to stop the villain from trying to kill his mom. They were doing absolutely nothing, just standing there watching him. And Deku just gets super pissed at this and just starts crying. And, like, the villain, or the heroes look at this. They're like, what should we do? And the villain just starts laughing. Hey, kid, look here. I'm about to kill your mom. And, like, Deku just looks shocked at this. And right then, he slits Inko's throat. And then slits both of her tendons right um, on the below your ears, basically making her bleed out really, really fast. And Deku is watching his mom die, and the heroes are doing nothing, as the villain said, Don't come any closer, I'll kill the kid too. And that's when Deku just yells, I wish everyone could just go away and leave me alone. And like he's just yelling at them and like the villain is like oh we got a feisty one here and then he just all the heroes and the villain just drop instantly to the floor and they're like what why am i in so much pain what is this kid's quirk and like the heroes like one of them crawled up to him and asked what's your quirk kid and he says i don't have one like damn it what is this and after a while, Deku just says, I want all of this to stop. And the hero's heads just pop. They explode. Same with the villains. Just explode. And Deku's seeing, like, the like some of the top 50 heroes just die that easily from him. Just kind of shocked Deku. And he basically just crawled up against the corner and just started crying himself to sleep. And after a couple days of Deku just, like, after a couple of hours of Deku standing there and, like, the heroes and villain go- going missing, like, people started to get suspicious at what happened. And that's when um, All for One shows up and tells Izuku that he is a very strong cork and if he'd like to come with him. And Deku is like, uh, okay. Because, like, Deku had no power. Sorry about that, guys. I just got interrupted. But, so, basically, what I was saying, Deku has no more, no family now. His father is just gone. His mo- mom is dead. And there's just a bunch of bodies inside his house. And All for One just walks in and asks him to join him since he has no more family. And Deku's like, okay, sure. Because All for One asked, or he told Deku that he could train him. And Deku said, okay, cool. So he went with him. And what I'm saying, Deku's quirk is actually like some sort of a mind quirk, basically. So you know the Force in Star Wars or something, how like they can lift people up? Well, basically he has something like that, 
but he can also, like, explode their minds, basically. It's from, like, a comic series that I've read before about a villain Deku, so I just thought I could do it and, like, make it in my own way, basically. So he has that quirk. And time skip, we're going, Deku's been missing maybe 10 years. He's, like, 16, or, no, he's been missing 8 years, he'd be 14, and he... And this is the start of the anime. So, which, which happens, like, Deku is just, like, walking back to the hideout bar, whatever you guys want to call it. And he's just walking back. So, like, he's just walking back. And he's walking through an alleyway, and then a sludge villain attacks him. And, like, Deku said, you made the mistake attacking me. As the sludge villain just instantly is in pain. And then just explodes everywhere. And All Might just lands and says, I am here. And then Deku's kind of pissed off that like All Might would decide to show up after the time that he could have been killed. He's like some hero he is. And then he said, wait, who killed the villain? And Deku's just like, oh, well, I did. And All Might's just like, wait, what? You're, you know you're not supposed to use your cork in public, you know. Cause that's against the law. And then Decker's like, well, it was self-defense. He could have killed me. And All Might was like, okay, yeah, that's true. And Deku, and then All Might says, shoot, I'm running out of time. I gotta go. And then Deku never grabs onto his leg. And, well, and the, All Might just jumps off. The sludge villain's already dead, so it never attacks Bakugo. So that never happens. But what I'm gonna... So that happens, and Deku comes back. And so basically, All for One tells Deku that he wants him to join UA. And But Deku's like, but how? I'm not... My cork is not suited for that. I can basically kill whoever I want. And he's just like, yeah, that's true. But if you only show them your force abilities, then you can use that. Because Deku has some sort of telekinesis, just like his mom. But he couldn't unlock it because it was trapped inside him, needing, needing like a real moment for him to unlock it. Like something that would make him need a cork. That's how he unlocked it to kill the villain and some oh, and the heroes, but yeah. So that all happens, and Deku's just like, okay, sure. Because he's been training with All for One for like eight years. So, he, so he's just like, he has such a good like ability or use of his quirk. Of it's like the force ability, so he can like basically, like push people into walls and stuff. He can pick up like a hundred people at a time. I'm gonna say like he had a really really powerful telekinesis ability, and like, so I'm gonna go ahead and just skip right up to the UA entrance exam, and he's been training it super hard for the past ten months on his force abilities to get it stronger. So he ends up going there and he sees Bakugo. And Bakugo is a little surprised to see this familiar kid. And then Bakugo's like, do I know he's from somewhere? And he's like, I don't know, Kachan, do you? And like Bakugo hearing this just like falls backwards like, Kachan, Deku, what are you doing here? You stupid corkless kid. And he was like, Kachan, I'm not corkless anymore. I've always had a cork, I just never was able to unlock it. And, like, Bakugo's just, like, stunned at this. And he said, why'd you disappear for eight years? And Deku's like, what do you mean? I've always been around. And he's like, you disappeared from everything, Deku. All the heroes were looking for you. I'm looking for that guy that killed the villain and the heroes and your mom. And Deku kind of just smirks at that, like, oh, really? And then he says, I was there when that villain killed my mom. The heroes were doing nothing. 
and like Bakugo is just kind of surprised at this. Like the like cheery Deku that he like knew eight years ago is now some like goth emo kid that's kind of edgy. So like no offense to anyone who's like that though, but he's just like like Bakugo is just completely stunned at this. He's just like what the heck. So to get to the UA entrance exam, like Deku just runs out, you, he, like, shoots air behind him, making him jolt forward, and he just picks up robots with open hands and then just cr puts his hands into fists, instantly crushing the robots into a tiny ball. And he just does this repeatedly over and over again until he gets to the, um, until he gets to the zero-pointer robot. Everyone's completely running at this, and then he sees Uraka, there and he's like oh crap i'm gonna go save that girl and he just jumps he uses his air to jump up and he focuses all his quirk power to crumble the giant robot and it works but now he's fallen he's falling down and he just keeps jolting air so he's falling slower and slower and slower and then he falls to the ground, and he helps Uraka up out of the rubble. And then she asks him what his name is, and he says, My name is Zu, and then he just falls over. He used so much of his cork to, like, destroy that one robot that he just completely passed out. And Uraka's kind of like, what the heck? What's wrong with this kid? Like, she doesn't know that he used up all of his power. She just thought he was really strong. So she's, like, kind of horrified that this kid just randomly fell right in front of her. So basically, Uraka just picks him up, and then... So he picks her up, and... Or she picks him up and takes him to the nurse's office. Now, he wakes up at the nurse's office, and Uraka is just standing there, like... Like... Oh, thank goodness you're awake. She And then she said, thank you for saving me. And Deku just said, ow, my head hurts. What did I do again? And she's like, you don't remember? You saved me from a giant robot. It's like, oh, yeah, that. And I shouldn't have able, should have been able to do that so much easier. I'm so weak. Deku, and then Uraka's like, not at all. You saved me. You're, you're truly my hero. And, like, Deku kind of just blushes at this, like, oh, Crap, what the heck? And he's just kind of blushing at this, and so is Uraka. So they're, like, kind of, like, they're really good friends now, and, like, there's something going on between them, basically. So that ends up happening, and a couple days later, he gets an acceptance letter saying that, good job, young Midori All Might. It's just, like, good job. You managed to pass the test, scoring the highest score out of everyone there. Out of every UA score in both areas. In the um, fitness exam, I'm just going to say. I don't really even know. One of you guys commented down below, and I'm like, <sighs> I can't remember. But he got the high, He got a 100% on the theory exam and like a 200 on the practical exam, I'm going to call it that. And, like, everyone was shocked that this kid got so much. And the reason I'm saying Deku is super, super smart and how he got 100 is because each day, right after training, he'd go straight to his room because the only thing he could do was study or train. So he's just been studying so many things and training so much to the point where he's super strong and super smart. So he's like super, like he knows a lot. So he would be a very strong hero or villain. And like they can, like the heroes see this and like they just want to protect him because they know that he, the villains might want him. Even though they already have him, they don't know that though. So I'm going to end it off here and I'm going to do the um, fitness exam on like the first day of UA that they do tomorrow for what if Deku was a villain part two. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. 
slash part. Um, and make sure you guys go give me suggestions of new what-ifs for next week. And please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. Bye.